Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to all of you on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We use as our order of worship this morning the order of divine service setting four with Holy Communion as uh, printed. Let us join now in singing together hymn number 605, Father Welcomes. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us seek refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro for the day, reading it together. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. We continue with the Kyrie. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird in the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. 
The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. The man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at the first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will, now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him for a little while who is made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering and death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, from whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. But therefore, what therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus saw it. He was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Having heard the word of God, we make common confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next hymn, hymn number 803, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Mark, in our gospel lesson for today, continues to record some hard words for us to read and accept. Today, he writes about marriage. And if you're truthful, you have to admit that marriage has gone badly wrong in our society. We're trying to redefine it for many years now. We've tried to change the definition of marriage. And with that definition, we're trying to change the definition of family. As we look at marriage, a lot of people no longer regard marriage as anything. Why is it that so many younger and older people choose to live together rather than making that commitment and seeking God's blessing in marriage? Why is pornography running rampant in our country and is one of the biggest industries in the world? Why do we treat children in the womb as either a person or not a person, depending on whether or not the mom wishes to bring the child to term? How is it that we have reached the point where casual sex, sex has become widely regarded as a recreational activity? to be enjoyed whenever and wherever you can find two or maybe more willing and consenting adults. Why has there been such a huge ex escalation in divorce? Why are there so few children in so many families that could be blessed with more but deliberately choose not to have them? And why do so many, even in our own churches, give um, approval to some or all of this under a satanic twisting of our Lord's words, judge not? What is going on? Did God really say that was the serpent's words to Eve. That's always the first question by which Satan plants the seeds of uncertainty and doubt before he proceeds to flat out contradict God's word to you. His tactics don't change. What's happened to us as a society is that we have been seduced first into doubt and then into disbelief of God's word. This word about all, about family, about marriage, about children. All three are special objects of Satan's attack, his hate, because all three find their foundation in God's will and plan for the human race. In his plan, for the human race to bring us blessing. Now make no mistake about it. God's, the Holy Scriptures reveal God's plan for the human family. We heard that in our Old Testament re reading for today. Marriage and family are not a social construct, something that we dreamed up. We don't get to define them as we choose. God is the one who instituted them. And God is therefore the one who defines them. You heard it, like I said in the Old Testament lesson for today, as God cares 
for his new creation, man, Adam, and finds that it's not good for Adam to be alone. So what does God do? God institutes marriage. Marriage is and was God's idea from the beginning. It is his gift. He created the woman to be the helper for the man, so he would not be alone. Moses concludes then, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That is the Lord's will, the Lord's plan, male and female, a man and a woman given to each other given for our benefit and blessing. And then, after all that, when two become one, the Lord often delights to give even more gifts. Children, the gift of children. And they are not in the Lord's plan to be thought of as a burden but a blessing. You heard it in today's intro. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. So far, God's plan. Unfortunately, you don't have to read too much further in scriptures before you see this institution of the Lord given for our benefit and our blessing under attack. Polygamy, unfaithfulness, concubines, family dissensions, fights, murder, and bloodshed. The pages of scripture are littered with the damage inflicted on the human race by the unflagging assault of Satan on this good gift of God and are buying into his lies. Now all of that has been going on already for a thousand, thousands of years when the Pharisees come to Jesus and ask their question in today's gospel, seeking to trap him by drawing on the <coughs> mess God's own people had, <coughs> had made of marriage. Pharisees came up and in order to test him asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. But Jesus regards even these words of Moses in Deuteronomy that permitted divorce under certain circumstances to be merely a concession to the hardness of the human heart. He says in response, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer one, two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let man not separate. This echoes Malachi chapter 2, where it is written, Did he not make them one with a portion of the Spirit in their union? And what was the one God seeking? Godly offspring. The disciples struggle with these words from their Lord with the Lord's adamant insistence that divorce is not the will of God, that it undoes what God himself has done in uniting together the man and the woman. They asked the Lord, in effect, if he really meant it. His words are uncompromising. Whoever, divorce <coughs> Whoever divorces his wife and marries another, commits adultery against her. 
And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Divorce and remarriage is simply adultery and contrary to the will of God expressed in the sixth commandment. He allows no wiggle room in today's gospel. Jesus doesn't think about marriage the same way we tend to. Most people know situations where, if they are honest, they'd say that divorce is much better. It simply makes sense. It's the reasonable thing to do. Why doesn't our Lord get it, though? People loved by God grasp the answer to that question, and the entire gospel today will shine with a new light, a new joyful light. And so our Lord Jesus comes into the flesh so that he can answer the disciples' question. Why doesn't Jesus get divorce? You see, because your God doesn't get giving up. He does not give up on relationships. That would be contrary to his nature. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The Lord couldn't and wouldn't back off on his promises. They hold, they hold forever. And so as Jesus speaks both to the Pharisees and even more to his disciples, he wants us to know that even though in our sinful flesh we sometimes give up, our God is faithful and never gives up. And so our Lord Jesus comes to take a bride for himself, a bride to whom he will be faithful forever. If our problem is a hard heart, God in the flesh, our Lord Jesus, is a tender heart. God put Adam to sleep and took from his side that which he made the woman. So our Lord Jesus sleeps in death on the cross and his tender heart is pierced. Then from that heart flows a fountain of blood and water, blood and water that the church has long connected with baptism and the Holy Supper communion. That which flowed from the pierced heart of our Lord is a very picture of that, by which the Holy Spirit tenderly creates the bride of Christ, the church, and brings her to the bridegroom. And that bridegroom your Savior, Jesus, is faithful to you, for his heart is not hard, but tender. He is faithful even when you are faithless, especially to him. He doesn't get divorce because it makes no sense to him. Because in his heart is a divine love that simply is unwilling to let you go. Unwilling to lose you, no matter what. It's that same divine love that simply doesn't give up. Doesn't get giving up and will not give up. It will forge every barrier to break down whatever comes between you and him. 
All this, you see, is pictured in the way God, not we, not Adam, not our society, long ago designed the institution of marriage and family. God established marriage and family to be an image of his own unfailing commitment to his church, his bride, to us. Therefore, if there is anything in this sad world that can bring hope and future to counter the mess we've made of trying to do of what we've tried to do with marriage and family on our own terms because of the hardness of our hearts, because we think we know better than God, it is to open the heart of Jesus. His open heart mirrors for us the Father and reveals the unfailing love of God, his patience and loving kindness toward us that have no end. Come, taste it anew today as you come to the bridegroom's table, as he pours into you more forgiveness than you have sinned, more life than you've got death. He sends you forth forgiven and renewed to begin mirroring in your families and your neighborhood the divine love of your bridegroom who holds you fast and has become one with you forever. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We rise as we go to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, help us by your spirit to receive your kingdom in humble repentance like little children, that we may enter it in the joy of your forgiveness in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may pay closer attention to your word, lest we drift away from it and neglect the great salvation it reveals to us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, in a reflection of your eternal love, you join man and woman together so that they are no longer two but one flesh. Bless the engaged, the newly married, and those who have shared many years together with even more of your love, that they may live together in it with joy their whole lives long. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, help all parents who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism also to bring them to him faithfully in the divine service, that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, look with favor on those who celebrate baptismal birthdays, including Kelly Quaid, Taylor Hamilton, Tyler Hamilton, Diane Johnson, Tanner Coetzel, Heather Pankretz, Reilly Nickel, Ricky Olchenbruns, Bentley Stahl, Deb Molitor, Olivia Schrader, and Steve, Stephen Gertzema. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with their abiding love, with your abiding love, all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, comfort, especially Sawyer Carrison, who has 
uh, ACL injury. Bruce Falk, Darlene Fredham, Greg Gore, Addison Jansen, Kim Noss, Esther Nelson, Margaret Olchenbruns, Manetta Penner, John Yisk Isker, and all others who suffer in body and mind. Attend to the daily cares and needs of Eileen Adrian, the Jordan and Sonia Brugman family, Doris Friesen, Jim and Marlene Wolf, Esther Nelson, and Laota Saley. You made the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering, that in all their trials they might put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with this service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you had prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receiving the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We join in singing the Nunc Dimittis.
Now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go in peace. We rise as we sing the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in fervent love toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn. Hymn number 738.
God's blessings to all of you as you have worshipped here today. And I pray that you know for sure that your God will never give up on you. And that he does offer his forgiveness always. And with that, eternal life. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Dave now. He has some words for you about stewardship.
being newly retired, I finally got Stone and Branch. You know, and they have fun down there with my wife. And, and, uh, and one of the songs, you know, and it was in November, by the way. Everything turns Christmas in Branch in November already. You know, I'm just sort of like, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Go on. 